Hey, Rano! Could you design me the best guitar in the world? I'm sorry, Seymour. I'm afraid I can't do that. Ah, okay. How about a symmetrical V guitar with vintage copper hardware? Okay, that's pretty cool. Hello, this is Simon from Kiras Instruments and I have enlisted the help of AI for this video. I'll start this build by planing down some mahogany and jointing the edges to 90 degrees. I'll mark the center line of the body to one piece and sketch the body shape out for additional pieces for the sides. All pieces are then planed to final thickness and glued together. My drum sander smooths and levels the body plank out. I'm sketching the outline of the neck to a ready-made plank. The headstock angle is sawn at 15 degrees. Saw marks are sanded down and then the pieces are glued together. I'll plane the sides of the neck plank down for small additional pieces. A thin sliver of mahogany is sawn off which will make the headstock veneer. The excess is sawn off the headstock and then sanded down to final thickness. I'll trim the neck and headstock outline closer. Attach routing templates and then route them to final dimensions. I'm roughing out the neck shape now, so if any warping happens, I can still re-level and straighten the neck. A slot for the truss rod is routed in a fixture holding the neck in place. I'm prepping an ebony fretboard plank by sawing off the excess, sanding it down to final thickness and marking the center line. A special jig plate is used for locating fret slots. The fretboard is placed on a jig for the CNC. A small, almost a needle-like 0.6mm end mill is used to create a pocket for the fretboard inlay. I'm using simple toothpicks to hold the fretboard in place while gluing. Off camera, I milled out the copper inlay pieces and here I'm finishing them off with small files. Black colored epoxy glue is used for the inlays. I'm screwing down the body plank through the CNC and then milling out the body outline and all the pockets for the neck and hardware. It's pretty cool, but it needs something more. Hey Rhino! Hey! Rhino! Could you add a symbol, like a Cthulhu thing or something like this? Yep. 
Yeah, let's go with that. I turned the body upside down for the floiter or spring pocket and for the electronics cavity. I'll trim the outline with a bandsaw and finalize the body shape with a table router. Holes are drilled for the neck bolts and the output jack. An extra long drill bit is needed to reach the rest of the electronics. The neck bolt pattern is copied to the neck, holes drilled out and threaded inserts, well, inserted. An angle grinder makes quick work of the belly contour and thinning out the neck heel. And don't tell anyone how I use an angle grinder to make the wear on the body. On to my favorite part, shaping and finalizing the neck profile. And to my least favorite part, radiusing the fretboard. I'm resawing the fret slots and checking they're all deep enough. Stainless steel frets are cut to length and then hammered in. A drop of super glue secures the frets in place and fills in any gaps. Additionally, super glue welds in the frayed ends so no sharp edges will remain after sanding and filing them down. I'm using a template to mark in the tuner holes and then drill them out. Next, the body and neck are sanded down for stain and lacquer. I'm using black stain as a contrasting color to show where more sanding is needed. Gita's Instruments is not responsible for any summoned great old ones, nor possible enslavement of humanity. Please summon Cthulhu responsibly. Anyways, I'm finalizing the stain with hand sanding to bring out some of the grain. First coat of lacquer is applied. Between coats of lacquer, I'm roughing previous coat with some scotch Bright for better adhesion. I'm applying my logo as a water slide decal. 
which is secured in place with a special solution that dissolves the film of the decal. A few more coats of lacquer is applied. I'm leveling the threads with a file, constantly checking for any high spots, and using a radius sanding block to match the fretboard radius to threads themselves. A small triangular file is used to crown the threads back to the correct rounded shape. I'm rechecking the threads for any high spots I might have missed. The threads are sanded with progressively finer grits and then polished to a mirror shine. I'm removing any excess lacquer from the fretboard sides and rounding it off slightly. I'm casting some epoxy around the truss rod end for the Floyd Rose locking nut screws to have something to bite into. All the electronics pockets are painted with conductive paint to shield them from electromagnetic interference. The assembly starts with installing the Floyd Rose spring claw, bushings for the bridge, the output jack, cushions for the pickup and the pickup itself, electronics are wired, and finally, the Floyd Rose bridge itself. I'm sanding the place down for the locking nut and then screwing it down. The tuner holes are bored open for the tuners themselves. A coat of white mineral oil or paraffin oil is applied to the fretboard. The guitar is stringed for the first time. Finally, the setup is checked. Truss rod, string height and fine tuning are all adjusted. And here it is. Oh, and I met a friend for it as well. Anyways, that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching.